Hello, DDers, RPGers, Game Masters, and such. I'm doing the second part of the Hex Crawl. I'm going to go through a battle simulation. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because when you're running a batch of characters like this, what's the easiest way to to run them so they can have a battle? And then, you know, you're, you're playing a lot of things at one time. I've already showed some easy operations. The first of all is the hit point counter using d20 countdown dice and then i basically just use a paddle bit drill holes in these things and you can just turn them so at the end of the day you get done playing you just calculate your thing on their card start racing every five seconds that saves some time second thing is all the characters get a die as you can see right there for what they're going to be running into and the encounter is going to happen the other thing i do is i have just a playing board and let's say they're going, and I am not putting my guys up there yet, but I'm just going to take all their die and throw them in here because I already know who's what, right? So they go in my little my tray, right? Um, they're going to come upon a squad of goblins. There's six of them sitting up here. Let's say their armor class is 14. They do 1d6 worth of damage, and I'm going to show you what they look like. They're right there on the board, right? Um, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to position my... My dwarves up in a situation, and I guess I can move these back a little bit so you get more of an idea. They're, and I use countdown timers because I put their hit points right on it. I'm not hiding it from myself. I know what's going on. And I'm a real firm believer, and I don't have to really know the exact proximics of where things are. But let's say my ranger's got a bow. My tw two dwarves have a bow. And we're going to take first shots on this. And I'm going to hold back because if I had a true party, I'd hold back with the cleric. And my melee guy is being my, um, uh, I think my my paladin only has a two-handed sword. He does not have a um, means of shooting from distance. So I'm going to let these three guys take their first pop into the battle, right? And so they're going to get surprised because they've got a ranger. They know what's going to happen. So I grab the following die. The ranger die and my two dwarf dies like this, okay? And I'm going to... Easily look on their cards. This is where the note cards make it easy. I just look and see what it is their bonuses to hit, which is already going to be on here, right? So for for like the ranger, his bonus to hit because of his dexterity is plus one, okay? And my fighter one, fighter two, these two guys down here, their bonuses, they actually don't have any because they don't get a dexterity bonus. So it makes it super simple. And I just basically roll them out. Let's see what we get. I'm going to put this here, make it go of it so you can see this thing. Boom. All right. The 15 is going to pop. The other two guys will be a miss. Six guys, which one does he shoot? All right? So you can tell where it's located. Definitely, we probably shoot down in the front, too. Okay? So would it be the guy that looks like the chief or the other guy? We don't really know. So one of these things I could say, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is he enough? Four, five, six. We're going to shoot this guy. He's shooting, right? It's the big fighter because he has a bonus to his strength. Obviously, if he rolls a one, it's a two. This will take him out. He's gone. Battles become quick, right, when you do it this way, right? Now, what you want to do is make sure you do the countdown die on these guys, right? So now he's at 19. This guy's at 19. And, of course, this guy's at 19. And I'm going to just go ahead and keep these things rolling right here. I guess I'm not really in the view of the camera, but you can see. I just move these things so I can track my arrows instead of, like, writing them down every time. Now, thank God for Swords of Wizardry. You get two shots per round when you're going to use a bow. These guys didn't notice this coming. We're ambushing them. Roll again. Ooh! Ranger's hit with a 17. So he's definitely going to pop him. <coughs> Let's say we're taking the two guys in the front. He's definitely shooting on um, this guy up here. So that's the chief. So it's five. Nice. Plus his strength bonus. And he gets a bonus because he is actually a... Uh, uh, ranger shooting on a thing, so it's going to be a good old fashioned. I think when we look at it, it should be an eight, right? So it's an eight, boom, boom, boom. Um, and that's going to drop him down to two, okay? Now, as far as the wizardry, I know the new, newest edition has a morale check. You're shooting on a chief, he's down to two, but let's say we're not going to do that for these guys. Once again, you pull your tray out, drop these guys down. Now we got 18, 18. 18. Now keep in mind, you're just trying to save yourself paperwork, right? So you're going to go boom, 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 right? Now, let's crush in the melee, right? We're going to roll initiative. Obviously, I can immediately decide which dice is which dice. This will always be the party dice. That's always the enemy dice. Whoever rolls higher, in this case, da-da-da-da, ties always go to the party. It looks like this is a two, this is a one, so the party gets to go first. 
They're going to run them. Let's run, ambush all these guys. Obviously, now the paladin comes in. The cleric can hold back, or he can just sit there. He's protecting the mage. We can do this any way we want. It's your game, right? So we're going to crush. This guy's going to enforce him. This guy's going to crush on him. He's crushed on him. He's taking the guy behind it, all right? Once again, you're batch rolling, which makes this the only person that's not in the roll is both the cleric and the um, mage. This makes the battle fast and furious. Oh, man, look at that. We got a 20 on the field, right? So this guy, I always play, and this is the second dwarf. This is, a, he has a 2 anyways. That would be an automatic kill with the 20 when you're hitting guys this low, right? Maximum damage, right? Unfortunately, 7, 3, and 8, the other three guys miss. <gasps> Ooh, that's horrible, right? So now, these guys are going to pair up. Now, how you do this is that we're going to move this here, this here, and this here. These two guys engaged, these two guys are engaged, or basically, uh, we'll move him to here. We'll move him to here, move him to here. When the enemies attack, use the same dice. So you can say who's being attacked by who. It's very simple, right? In this case, uh, the only one's going to get hurt where a 13 is the paladin, and what's, what's his armor class? His armor class is, he's got ring mail. 12, he's going to get hit for 1d6 worth of damage. Crap sticks. Okay, 12, two off. So we grab this guy, we take the Paladin, he's going to switch down to 5. So this is how I run my battles, because it, it's really kind of... So we move him, him to 5 on his thing, because he's been hit. And then, obviously, now it's the party's turn. Take this back out. We're going back for our next round of roll. Oh, come on, guys, hit. Boom. I got a 17 with the big guy, crushing on this one. So uh, this guy, Fighter, is using a Battle Axe 1d8 plus 1. So we'll see what he gets. One plus one is two. Okay, I dropped this guy. I'm going to roll this down from five. Drop it to two. He's still on three. He's still viable. Everyone else is missing, though. No, there's an 18. The other guy hits 18. Okay, he's going to take him out, I believe. I hope so. Let's see what happens. He's a 1d8 plus one for him, too, as well. Seven plus eight. Okay, he crushed this guy. Boom, he's gone. He's still at four. Okay, so quick, nice epic battles right going on right here okay and now we still have four guys and i could pair these up this guy going here this guy's still on him i'm gonna have this guy turn he's gonna go on to that one so if we know who's striking who what's going on boom in this case once more the big man that big dwarf's doing some damages all right and everyone else is gonna miss which i guess kind of uh sucks oh, let's try this out uh one hit point with the damage it's going to take him down to two. I think I might have skipped the bad guy's turn, but they're going to do it now. Let's see what happens here. So they only get to hit three. So I'm going to have them... <laughs> the ranger's going to be hit on. The paladin's going to be hit on. And then we're going to have the uh, the bigger dwarf, which is the solid one. He's, these are all going to be attacked. There's only three guys on the field. That might be a hit. What's the ranger's armor class? It's 14. No, totally fine. And now we're going to flip again. We're going to go back in. And the battle continues. Setting up the same way as it was before. All three guys are going. Oh, a 16 for the strong guy. He is definitely going to hit him. 1d8 plus 1. He's going to hit immediately. He's out of the field. Ranger, 13. Uh, does he get a bonus? He does because of his being a ranger on a goblin. He's going to hit. He's got a long sword. 1d8. 4. He's gone, and then the last two guys, it looks like uh, the second dwarf is going to put his punishment on him. Boom, eight, he's down. So there's a quick battle with six goblins. It didn't really take that long when you're playing a group of characters like that. The idea of batch rolling the dice like this and then having the same dice being for the attacker really lets you know who's rolling for what. And You're not just rolling one dice at a time. That's where it gets all slow and goofy. So these are just like your damage dice can be your you know, your optimal set over here, but these guys, all of them get their dice. I use, I would use countdown timers for, um, for the hit points of the guys. Now, most games, if you have a monster that's big, you use two of them and make sure the two matching the same color. You can do this and say, wow, he's got 48 hit points or 38 hit points and you count down one and keep the other there. They're fighting like a dragon or something like that. So this is just, optimally speaking, a way of like playing a game in like solo and, and having it fun and not feel like you're just 
etching things down. Now at the end, when you get done with this thing, you find, okay, well he lost two hit points. That'd be the paladin, right? And then you say, okay, these other guys, how many arrows did they burn? Now they're down to 18, each one of them. What I do is on their note cards, you can sit there and take a look at this, I have circles. So I color in the circles. It's in pen, pencil so I can re-erase them. If they shade them in, that means they burn those arrows. It's a really quick way of, of doing this. So hopefully you found this interesting and worthwhile. It's another way to play this game. It's say if you're, you're doing this, is how you would run a solo hex for color or any, any kind of battle, I guess, if you're playing solo. With that, any comments, any suggestions, put them down in the comments. And, and I would like to, uh, to see what you have to say about it. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for your time. I hope you enjoyed this.